All right, we're preparing the live stream meeting. Try to get my shawl off. <laughs> Great. So, um, hello, welcome, um, everybody. And we're live. Um, hello. Welcome, everybody, here um, at the um, uh, first edition of the Siegel Talks. Um, uh, my name is Frank uh, Henschke, and I'm uh, the director, the artistic director of the Siegel Center. And this is a big moment for us. Uh, as you all know, like so many others, our Siegel Center is completely closed. The Greta Center is closed. CUNY universities are closed here in New York. It's a ghost town. And uh, it's a new situation we live in in this um, time um, of Corona, and uh, we all have to uh, start making sense and think about making art. Maybe also really take a time <clears throat> to um, to think. It is important. We are overwhelmed, I think, with so many things. But it's a global um, crisis. So many of our fellow artists uh, are in a completely different and new situation. So um, I'm. Honor to have today for the first time here uh, on our Siegel Talk, uh, Kristen Martin from the Here Arts Center, the great New York incubator of uh, the downtown arts, and of course the the brilliant and great uh, Taylor uh, Mac, um, too, who is also part of the landscape. Of course, a big big rock uh, here in New York. So thank you guys uh, both for for coming and welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So. Um, What's happening? Uh, maybe we start uh, with uh, Kristen. Kristen, the HERE Art Center, most probably lights are out, it's dark, <clears throat> a place that's normally bustling like a beehive. Um, what's happening? Tell me. Uh, well, we had to close our doors on March 12th, um, along with a slew of other theaters that day. And uh, we had brought a wonderful group from France um, and they were able to do their first performance and then they weren't able to continue. Um, they did a very beautiful thing that night uh, and they did a showing for our staff only um, mm -hmm. before packing up and going back to France. Um, and we did manage to get them all home early um, as we had hoped. Um, we launched uh, four online programs since then because we really were wrestling with how to be a part of our community's lives in these times. And so, um, it's been really beautiful and fun and um, invigorating to connect with our artists, past, present, and future. Um, and it's been also really beautiful to see how many audience members are tuning in to the online activities. We've had over 15,000 people connect to the online programming that we started just on uh, March 16th. So that's been really, it's been, it's been very healing at a time that is very challenging. Um, for all of us and for the world, you know, um, but to find a way to still connect as a community has meant a lot. And how's your family? How is your, what's, what's, how, what are you dealing with on that front? We're all here. Um, my, my son is home from college, obviously, because his college is shut down. And so he's here and um, we're a three person household in a two bedroom apartment. And there's a wonderful air mattress to help with that. <laughs> and we're um, cooking great meals every night to keep ourselves positive and seeing friends for Zoom parties and stuff. And my mom's a couple blocks away and we FaceTime with her and walk six feet apart from her. Uh, but we're, that's what we're into here in this strange desert town of a city, like you said. Mm. Yeah, such a, such a radical change of all of us in the theater. Theater is about communication. It's about community and not having that. Taylor, um, what, what's happening? Where are you? I cannot imagine you in, in not leaving an apartment. Uh, well, uh, I'm actually uh, in Massachusetts right now, I'm mm. hanging out and uh, just all I'm, uh, every day all I do is I'm working on this thing called the Trickle Up NYC, um, which is just, uh, I got the idea as everything was shutting down uh, and uh, worked with a bunch of other people, Kristen, one of them, um, to help make it happen. And in a week's time, we, we put this uh, site up where we've got over 50 uh, donating artists who have donated content for the site, uh, original and exclusive content for it. And we're raising money for uh, artists who are in need right now. We, uh, today, we just picked our first, um, their it's not a prize, it's commissioning. So uh, we're gonna be commissioning somebody with $10,000 to make uh, more content for the site. And uh, we just were able to do that today. We picked the first person today. So, um, so that's nice. It, uh, even though it's modest, it's something, it feels like something that uh, instead of just hibernating, uh, I was able to do on my 
a hunky little uh, <laughs> cell phone mm-hmm. on the internet because we don't even have Wi-Fi. I'm on a dirt road off a dirt road, but mm-hmm. uh, um, but it's uh, it feels it feels nice to participate in some way in all of this. So mm-hmm. that's good, and um, you know, just trying to find the creative solution to all of it. Yeah. Tell us a bit. It's like a subscription-based. Um, yeah, it's. Okay. Sub- How does it work? What's the idea? What was it inspired by? Um, well, it was it was inspired a little bit by uh, a few things. Uh, Elizabeth Suedos uh, was a mentor of mine, and she put my name forward for uh, a grant years ago, the Peter S. Reed grant. It was my first grant I ever got, um, and before that moment. Um, uh, for the first kind of 33 years of my life, I I was always living week to week, um, and uh, and as an adult, uh, even as a kid, I, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to eat every week, and um, so before that time, and then after uh, Liz put my name forward for this grant and I got it, uh, I. I've never had that fear. I've always been ahead of my, you know, I flattened the curve of my financial um, stress, you know. And so uh, I, I've always been able to eat since then, since I was 33 and I got that $7,000. So it, it, to me, it was about what can we do to change people's lives so we can take that element out of um, out of their lives. And there's so, and it wasn't, I didn't have to apply for the grant. I had to fill out a form once I was told I basically got it, but I didn't, it was just, I just got the money, you know? So it wasn't, there was, a, there was very limited bureaucracy. It was just, uh, there was very, uh, the gatekeeping was artist to artist. It wasn't, um, panel or, um, or, it wasn't a giant board or anything like that all deciding how these things work uh, it was just like this person can help this person so that's what inspired it um, and also that I overheard a, a young woman in a theater lobby say that 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 yesterday she had three jobs and today she has zero jobs and I thought you know this is a person who's living week to week how are they going to survive they don't I, you know I don't didn't know her finances but I assumed you know that she didn't have enough to like weather this storm so we're just figuring out what what we can do it's a subscription base so um you pay uh ten dollars at, at the very least but we offer options where you can pay more if you're if you're game to it's ten dollars a month or we have a 25 dollars a month option and you can also just donate if you want to and you don't want to subscribe but uh i i think it's amazing to subscribe because the content is unlike anything you'll see in any kind of other subscription um based uh, uh art site or or you know, entertainment site. So, so it's a bit like a Netflix uh, for for downtown artists, where you subscriptionally based artists will be yeah. paid as Netflix commissions. You know, writers, screenwriters, directors, as an yeah. alternative way. Um, yeah, and basically how it works is every time we we make ten thousand dollars, we give it away. That's it's that simple. So once it's ten thousand, it gets to the next person. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Kristen, you you are in touch with countless arm artists especially of course from new york what's the situation what do you hear from your peers from colleagues what's the situation well i mean it it's really dire um it was really good news on friday that the freelance uh people are included in this bill but when we were starting this we had no idea of that to be the case and from what i'm hearing a lot of people are still having trouble that it's particularly here in new york that the, the site keeps crashing, and even when you call on the phone line, there's problems. So I think it's still hard to, to get the unemployment, but basically every single artist I know, their gigs are gone, and they're gone for the foreseeable future. Um, almost every artist I know is also not being paid for gigs that they were engaged in for this month even, so it's with no notice. So like the complete security net has fallen out for our community, um, and I think it's a, it's a really dire situation. Um, and I think that's the reason that so many artists were game to be part of this project. I mean, the 50 artists that agreed to participate are phenomenal people from all different walks of life. Um, but I think all of them have been in that spot at one time or another where you don't, you don't know how you're gonna even buy your groceries. And I think that that's why 50 people were like, yes, I, I, will, I will give content to help make this happen um, and create this for our community. And I think it shows the, um, the loyalty of the community that some of the people that are subscribing are artists that are like in 
pretty dire straits. So when we were looking at the list, it was really moving to see the list of people who've subscribed to paying the $10 a month right now, even though they're some of the people that were very, that were hoping to help, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's really remarkable. Yeah. And yep. the videos, yeah, the videos are really lovely. Like Taylor is saying, like the, the people are sharing something that's what they're feeling right now in response to what's going on or a recent work that you haven't been exposed to yet. And there's a, a level of like intimacy that is really beautiful and not it's not produced and it's not fancy. Most of it is very personal and heartfelt. And it's some of our greatest theater makers right now who are sharing that content with us. Maybe some names of people who are involved. Uh, for our I'm sure. Um, Two-time Pulitzer Prize winning playwright Lynn Nottage. Um, uh, uh, there's tons of MacArthur winners like Sarah Rule and Dominic Mariso and um, Basil Twist uh, just put some stuff up there. Sharon Bridgeforth, wonderful uh, playwright, uh, poet. Um, uh, we got uh, Annie, Dirty Annie, Annie Baker and Helga Davis, um, yeah. Bridget Everett, uh, Rachel yeah. Trafkin sings Puff the Magic Dragon to her baby. <laughs> And she's just gave us a new video too. So we're going to put that up uh, uh, tomorrow, I think. Um, we're going to, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just so many different kinds of people that uh, the, mm. the goal was to um, ask people who kind of are rooted in um, the off-Broadway, off-off-Broadway uh, performance art mm -hmm. uh, scene in New York so that it's very grassroots, so that even if they've exploded, their careers have exploded, they kind of are rooted in, in this in the, world so that mm -hmm. um, they're connected to the people that we want to help, you know. Yeah, so um, in a way, for sure, also is a time for us, all of us, to think. Um, because we are forced to stop uh, in the middle of our tracks and as Kristen said, almost uh, immediately a show starts the one evening, the next day it's closed. What are you guys thinking? What's, what is on your mind? What, how do you make sense out of it for this world? What, is, what are your thoughts? You want to go, Kristen? Sure. <laughs> um, thanks, Taylor. Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, I think that we're in... Um, like literally a reset button has been pressed, a pause button has been pressed. And um, we have to examine uh, as a field, how we go forward as a city, how we go forward as a country, as a world, how we go forward. I think that if there were ever um, any doubts about our global connectedness, those are, those are dismissed, you know, no one will think that anymore that we're not globally connected. Um, and I think that we're in a time where we really have to think about, um, what getting together means, what, what community means and how we can define and create community in different ways. Because I think that we're in our homes, at least here in New York City, I think we're in our homes at least another six to eight weeks. Um, I hope it's not gonna be that long, but it, I think it's likely, you know? Um, so I think we have to think about as a field, how we survive, you know? Um, every organization that is a nonprofit arts organization that shut down right now, is in a cash crisis um, of some sort. Um, there's, and, and that is also the other people that are in our field and how they're paid and how they continue to be able to, to, to pay their rent and participate as citizens in our economy. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a vast moment um, for examination and for assessment. Yeah, yeah and I, um, I just keep, I just keep thinking about the creative solution to every, you know, that's my, that's my technique I learned in the clubs is, you know, in, I call it incorporating the calamity, you know, so um, I, I'd be performing in the club and uh, I'm on my ukulele and then two, two guys would be having sex over here and the whole audience is watching the guys have sex, right? Because it's a gay club. So, <laughs> which is fun. That's part of the energy of it. Uh, but, you, you know, if something is threatening to take the story away from the storyteller, then you have to figure out a way to incorporate that threatening thing into the story at all costs, right? Or otherwise it steals the story. And recently it's been <laughs> the Trump administration and Trump who have been stealing the story from the American people. And now it's this pandemic. Um, 
and uh, and so we have to figure out a way to incorporate the story into our it, 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 that story into our lives, um, and and make something out of it. I mean, that's that's the only way I know how to how to survive uh, emotionally, um, uh, but maybe even uh, economically. You know um, how we all can do that together. So so that's I just like we're creative people. Uh, I mean, Rachel's thing at the Tony Awards, Rachel Chapkin's thing, you know, where she said it's uh, it, diversity is in our field is a failure of imagination in a field where, you know, our job is to be uh, imaginative. And I think that's one of the great things about being a creative is that, okay, let's hunker down, let's figure out what we can do. How can we, how can we um, create solutions to the problems and um, rather than trying to make us all go back to the way things were uh, how do we move forward um, and so that's uh, that's what I all I'm meditating on almost every day is is that yeah, yeah and I, I I love what you just said Taylor and I feel like we're in a time where um, you can tackle what you can tackle. And I think like Trickle Up was is, is such a beautiful project because you had this idea of how can we help people? And, and, and it's really on a grassroots artist to artist level. The artists that are donating videos are selecting an artist to receive a, a commission, you know? And it's a one-to-one -one relationship and it's getting $10,000 into one person's hands in our first week. And hopefully we're gonna repeat that as quickly as possible, you know, to get through the 50 artists that are gonna get this funding. And that's with the support of the community that that can happen. And it's a one-to-one -one, person to person relationship and you can solve a problem on a one-to-one -one, person to person level. Yeah. And the, the other thing we're trying to do in terms of uh, colleges, uh, universities, um, uh, is figure out some kind of academic uh, price for it or something like that so the students can have access to the material because it's really educational. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, to see, to see um, uh, Matt Mayer read cut material from an Annie Baker play, that's not something that you're going to mm -hmm. see uh, anywhere else. You're not going to see that on Netflix. So mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's really uh, something that um, it, it's going to benefit our community in the long run, not just mm -hmm. financially, but also the way that we share work with each other. So uh, that's something that's our one of our next stages yes. in trying to figure that out. And if anyone out there wants to help and knows how we can uh, get yeah. access the academic people let us know yeah maybe to offer like a subscription base like others do and online and then people who are registered as students can go i'm happy to, to yeah. see if our library or department can help and i'm certainly uh, could do that yeah. but let's i mean it was peter brook who said you know theater is when there are two people in a room and someone watches some people now say maybe you don't even need someone to watch it's like brechts you know uh, educational place, but there are two people in the room and you watch and that's gone. It's like the essential, it's like you pay, play piano, but there are no strings. Still, we have to do it. What, what, does it what, does, what does it mean for you guys to think about theater and what it is? Does it, do you think it will be different? Let's say we come out of it, will, it, will there be a different? Well, I mean, theater is different now, right? I mean, it, it's di certainly different from how it was with the Greeks where it was uh, um, all the, everybody that was in the military when it was only men that got to go uh it was in these huge amphitheaters you know um uh and and they were competitions right mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so that's all kind of changed <laughs> yeah. although i will say being on broadway felt like i was in a reality tv show competitive tv show but yeah. that's another that's a conversation for another day but uh but you know, so I think things have changed already and now they're going to change again and then they're going to change again. And so, so the room now, right now, is a box, right? <laughs> it's like our little computer boxes and our cell phones. And my my dear friend, Glenn Marlowe, who's a wonderful performer and um, uh, performance artist and puppeteer. And uh, Glenn Marlowe decided that he wanted to do... Uh, uh, 
he was tired of looking at his face in a box. And so he was going to have his chosen face in a box. So I had makeup night. <laughs> he created this whole clown persona, right? So that when he has these Zoom meetings, he can have chosen face in a box. You know, that is theater. That is performance art, whether or not it's two people in a room that can touch each other uh, physically. It's still um, people in a it, people in a box touching each other, at least emotionally mm -hmm. and, and um, intellectually. You know? mm -hmm. uh, Kristen, do you think here Art Center will be different? Will you make different choices? It's really, I, I really don't know yet. Um, right now, I'm just trying to be very alive with the artists and the programming that we're able to do right now. And as we learn more, um, we'll figure out how to navigate that next terrain. You know, we, um, every show we do is different, whether it's a piece where you come in that is uh, immersive and your data is being integrated into the score and into the visuals, or you're moving all around the space in every nook and cranny, like we did with Taylor's Lily's Revenge or with uh, Zoe Martinson's recent Black History Museum. Like, so we're, we're gonna have to re-examine what our relationship is to the audience again. That's part of what we do all the time. It's scary for sure about what this next thing's gonna be and how long we're all gonna be living with it. Um, and when people will feel comfortable walking into a theater again and sitting next to other strangers, um, that's a, it's, it, it, it feels very, uh, the reports are so all over the place. It's very hard to understand what our future looks like. Um, but it makes you re-examine your present in an interesting way and find ways to function and create and feel that present. We have so many more tools now to keep us going than Shakespeare did, you know, um, than Elizabethans did, uh, that we can even have this meeting right now um, is something that they wouldn't have been able to do when they were dealing with their plagues. So, mm -hmm. um, so I guess, you know, I, I, I <laughs> I'm I'm obnoxious with my hope, but I mm -hmm. I, I, I I do I uh, well look we're all gonna die. There, nobody gets out alive, so we might as well uh, try to figure out the best possible way to live. You know. Yeah, I think <laughs> Shakespeare. Yeah, I think he was born in the time when the plague started. He wrote some say King Lear and under quarantine. I mean, right. artists have been and be working, but I'm um, still. Um, Kristen, are you going to give different themes to artists or do they choose what they do? Is there already are things coming in where you feel this is a, a Corona related uh, aesthetic uh, choice or a production? Of course, production yeah. methods are changing clearly, mm -hmm. but what's with the content? Uh, is there something you detect what's coming in? Um, well, we've been making a sequential community video. Um, I'm sure a bunch of people have seen the really beautiful video that was made with like 40 choreographers and they each finish a phrase and the next choreographer picks up the next phrase. So we were inspired by that. So we started uh, the BAM for Joe Manila's uh, uh, BAM thing. Yeah, so yeah. beautiful. Yeah, so um, we were very inspired by that. So we asked uh, 10 artists to uh, create a 10 second clip, um, but multidisciplinary. Um, and so it's called, the series is called Covideo and the first one was called Covideo Social Distancing. And um, so for the last 10 days, we've had each little 10 second clip up one at a time. But today um, the whole video is revealed and is on our Facebook and our Instagram. Um, oh, wonderful. It, it has amazing people. Our Associate Artistic Director, Amanda Soglowski, Basil Twist, Christina Campanella, Haiting Chen, like just amazing range of folks. Um, so that's exciting. Um, so, and our second one is gonna be called Flatten the Curve and Lisa Damore is the first one on Flatten the Curve. So we're gonna be launching those every couple of weeks and you can see the little 10 second clips every day. So that's one thing that we're all doing together even though we're not together. So that's a new thing for us to be doing is exquisite corpse video collaborations across disciplines. Um, we're uh, doing a live stream. Taylor did our first one last week. Um, and Sarah Farrington did one this past Friday. So every Friday we're gonna have an artist sharing something that is new or old or that is in response to the times or not uh, for 10 or 15 minutes. This Friday will be uh, Raja Feather Kelly. Um, so, you know, we're just trying to find our way. I'm working on a Zoom opera with Kamala Shankaram and Rob Handel. And Tell us a bit, what's that about? 
uh, the Zoom opera is 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 going to have six performers, and it'll be uh, live streamed on, on the Here site in a couple of weeks. Um, I think we're going. I think we're going April twenty fourth. But um, we're having a lot of fun rehearsing it. You know, over Zoom, we're figuring that out, <laughs> finding out what the time delays are for singing and music because it's oh, an okay. opera. So it's it's super fun. So no one will see each other in the entire rehearsal process, and the opening at Here Art Center will be on a screen. Yep, they're gonna. Well, we see each other like we're seeing each other right now. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so that is amazing. The question is, will theaters or performing arts places you now create permanently kind of an online digital presence? Will it be just at the time of a Corona, or will it be um, something new also for? I mean, Brecht wrote about said his theater is for the um, the children of the new technological age. We now live in a digital age, you know, and for the children, this is theater for the children of the digital age, perhaps also still Toys R Us a little bit, you know, but I'm sure it is getting serious. So perhaps, and that's what I think, there will be no longer just in time of a crisis when you can't do anymore, there maybe will be a new side. I'm like, we have opera, there's ballet, uh, there is uh, drama, there might be the online presence. Do you think this will happen or? Seems like it, it's uh, it's already happened before this. Most of the theaters I know have some kind of online presence, and you know everyone's always trying to stream. They're always trying to get me to stream my work, and I'm always saying no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> it's a but lot, it's different if you create live, live you create performer it. activists, you know, and um, but now you know, well, we don't have that option right now until we come up with a creative solution. Um, so uh, you know, I always say, see you on the other side or at the creative solution. So. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think, uh, yeah, the people will continue. This is great that, that the Hero Arts Center can get 15,000 people to come and check out their stuff in, in a week isn't what the, um, isn't normally what the Hero Arts Center can do because the capacity is only a hundred people, right? <laughs> so mm -hmm. so that's, that's incredible that they yeah. can reach more people. Um, yeah, you know, I don't, I think, I don't think we're gonna lose the, we're not destined to lose that we, we get to hang out with each other um, physically in a room. Uh, if that's true, then then humanity is dead. You know, like, I mean, like, we're gonna figure this out mm -hmm. at some point because people have to procreate. <laughs> you know? yeah. so, so I think we'll, we'll figure that aspect out. We'll all be able to hang out in a room together again, uh, you know, whether it's a couple of months from now or, or a couple of years, we'll, it'll happen. You know, so but it, it's exciting that in some ways that the I love the unions, but that the union rules have kind of laxed a little bit that are helping people be able to put their work out um, that uh, uh, just in this time right now until we can figure out how to how to still support the artists after this time. And I think it's um, uh, I, I, I think it's going to open up doors in terms of um, audiences to venues and in, in larger ways and people becoming aware of organizations more that they wouldn't normally because everyone's home, you know, looking at boxes. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'd like to echo uh, what what Taylor was talking about in terms of unions, because I do feel like that is an obstacle in some of the disciplines. It's not in all, though. So like our online programming is dance. Uh, music and puppets because they're not under equity's jurisdiction, but we're not showing any of the theater stuff um, because we weren't allowed to film it. So that is that is an obstacle right now in the theater field that there isn't very much that can be shared. There's there's situations in which you're allowed to do docu documentary versions, but you can't you can't show it in these in this context. Um, and there is some live streaming that's happening where the unions are doing new regulations that are making it possible. But um, equity has been so against the videotaping that actually it, it's disserving parts of our field right now in terms of being able to share our work with our communities. Oh, don't hear you. Uh, I'm sure for, for trickle up, uh, nobody asked uh, the unions, you know, if, they, if it's okay, I guess you. You went ahead um, and you um, um, yeah because you, it's oh all, how is that working it's the level of like instagram video it's not um mm -hmm. you know it's uh uh it's not people are, are aren't performing necessarily like matt mayer isn't like uh he, he's not performing some thing that 
the production of the flick, you know, on video. He's mm -hmm. reading some cut material. Um, so it's different. I think it, uh, we're not, we kind of uh, escape the rules that way because we're not, we're not taking money away from mm -hmm. artists um, uh, based on putting this content that wouldn't have existed otherwise. otherwise yeah. uh, so that's that's the difference. It's like when people try to uh, make money off of uh, free labor from actors, then then that that's kind of crappy. But mm. <laughs> but um, based on the success of the actors uh, sweat equity that they put into mm -hmm. a production or something like that. But this is more just like a journal sharing and things like that. So um, mm -hmm. It's, uh, I think it's it's slightly different kind of uh, thing. And it's it's actually filmmaking, so it's not really, um, it's not, I wouldn't call it theater. I would call it, uh, it it's, I don't know what you call these films. These, sh I would call it shorts. We're shorts. making shorts. Mm -hmm. and, I like that digital journal. Are you both journaling? Are you writing things down? What happens? I'm not. Are you, I don't have time. All I'll do is write people emails. Mm. <laughs> I am in love with arts administrators and creative producers right now because uh, I see how much work they have to do and how many questions they have to answer that they already mm. answered in another email, but they have to do it again because everybody reads mm. emails differently. <laughs> but maybe let's talk a bit also about New York theater. I think every crisis perhaps crystallizes, you know, what's already wrong or catastrophic, like, you know, the hospital crisis show. Uh, the government for decades, you know, has starved hospitals so all over the world. There's less and less uh, money available in Europe, especially. And one of the reasons that the virus spreads is perhaps also because of that. New York theater, we all complain, oh, but there's no money and no space. And now it is truly, there's no space and there is no money. Uh, what did you feel was wrong anyway? And what should be really changed if there's something comes out that a, a government or a civic society or a city of New York, the citizen says we need a new theater for a new time. What do you feel was so wrong? And is there a chance to do something better? Hmm. <laughs> you have an answer to that, Kristen? <laughs> uh, I think that people are, are people were, we usually are a community, um, like all the theater companies, like we have a, an artistic director's poker game that's existed for like 10 years. There's an artistic director's breakfast that's been going for about three or four years now. Um, there's a, a Slack channel that we started once COVID started so that we could all share what we were learning as quickly as possible. Um, there's a group of us writing um, city and state and federal officials together with a bunch of us like 50 or 60 or 80 theaters signed on to it. So I think that crises like these, like 9-11, this, but this is like 9-11 on steroids. It's not 9-11, it's so much bigger, but um, it, that's what Robert Lyons said. I'm quoting Robert Lyons when I say that uh, from yeah. New Ohio Theater. Um, but but we're, we're having to come together because we know by coming together, we can be stronger than if we're out on our own. We're not in competition with each other. We're in collaboration with each other to figure out how to solve this together and how as a community, we can work to solve it together. Um, so I, I just think we're all going to show our best leadership and our best listening skills and our best collaboration to get us to the other side of it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's interesting. I have no energy in me to think about how things were wrong before. You know? <laughs> like, like I just like uh, like uh, of course I had my complaints about how the industry worked before uh, a couple weeks ago, but uh, they all seem so trivial now. So I don't know. I'm just happy that everyone's trying to figure it out together right now. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I got an email from the Met. I sometimes go to the opera and they said, "Donate. We are struggling." And I wrote back, I would like to, but is it true? And I once read that, that the chief electrician gets $1.5 million um, a year, you know, as a salary. I think a distribution, you know, of resources perhaps, you know, um, should be different. And I think uh, that the, the vital community that also makes New York, New York, a community that as Hillary Miller in her book shows, you know, really also in the seventies and eighties was there to save New York. They made the contribution, they did not leave. They uh, made it a city where, um, you know, art was possible and made it ultimately attractive to become 
what it is now. It was uh, on the brink of going uh, broke at that time. It was a dangerous time and a group of great citizens and leaders helped New York. And so um, I feel um, that this uh, is also a moment, I think, where uh, the people in charge of distributing their resources and they will be scarce, but also to really think this is a community. That, of course, we love Lincoln Center. We love the great institutions, but that also the work, what you guys do, what you're involved in, hope will get a more, um, more, um, uh, more attention and support. And I think uh, this is something I hope that also will emerge because you guys are going on, you're doing the work. Um, most probably the big institutions are closed. I, I don't follow everything and uh, maybe there's some kind of online presence, but creative work is happening in small spaces as always, but also you, you are proof of it. We had just a couple of weeks ago, the great Christian Lupa, a great Polish uh, theater director who talked about his work and also back to Kantor, whose rehearsals he watched for the dead class. And um, he talked about, and also in other interviews that a theater should be, you watch a corpse, you know, you, there's something in the room in the middle, you, you realize all of a sudden what's life and what's that. He said, this is what I want audiences, Kantor said to, to look like it's an old Buddhist, I think also supposedly saying you spent a night you know, with a corpse. And uh, so now in a way I feel something like this is happening and really people are dying. People we know they die prematurely. They die with the virus because not just because of it, they already have conditions, but still really people are dying and um, it's scary. And um, I'm concerned, you know, for loved ones as you know, I'm sure you see Kirsten's mother who is 75, you said, or. 74. And others, you know, I'm sure she's fine. Well, but she's um, going to be mad what, at you, Krista. <laughs> will this, will this, 74, yeah, I'm sorry. But will, will, will this perhaps, you know, also, uh, is that a moment for us who make theater and theater ultimately makes, gives meaning, gives sense, sharing an experience with, with audience? Will, will that make us uh, uh, better theater makers? Or do you feel, um, theater already was good, but just not heard. No, I don't, oh, oh, I can't, I, I heard this pundit one time on the CNN, <laughs> the Whoop Blitzer asked him, you know, what's gonna happen with the election? And the pundit said, uh, I don't know, I'm not clairvoyant, that's not my job. And Whoop Blitzer said, well, that is our job here at CNN, our job is to tell the people what is going to happen. And, you know, I screamed at the um, television on the plane. <laughs> I was mm. on. <laughs> <laughs> that's not your job. You're not supposed to make the news. You're supposed to report on the news. Mm -hmm. So in some ways, I, um, uh, I guess I'm, I, I don't really want to predict what the, if, if we'll get better or not, I just want to hunker down and try to, um, be as good as I can and, uh, and hopefully, um, find people that are wanting to do the same, you know, <laughs> and support the people that, um, are, are wanting to make good work. I mean, one thing that I'm seeing from all of this uh, is uh, I, I, I feel more intimately connected to everybody than, um, than the kind of uh, competitive rat race that uh, you can so easily fall into in the city. So that's, um, that's been nice. I, I, and I hope that we continue that way, I, uh, at least for <laughs> a few months after all this. <laughs> mm. <laughs> It'd be nice to not feel like we're in competition with each other and instead we're just all trying to figure something out together. Because that's really all, all arts are. It's just, uh, that's all the arts are, I think. It's just people trying to figure out how to live a virtuous life in an unvirtuous world, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really second that. And I think that, you know, doing this project has been a, a labor of love to help idealistically go for something as a group and the group of people working with Nigel Smith and Emily Morse and Morgan Janass, and Blake Seidel, like the, ama well, uh, uh, the amazing people to think through this project, this brainchild of Taylor, but for each of us are adding our own little bits to helping to make it come together. And it's been a really beautiful affirming project in this time where the, it's really easy to only see the darkness. But I think that there's a lot of humanity and hope um, that we all carry within us and that we can share with each other right now. Yeah, and it, and 
other thing is that it's an idea that seems so obvious, you know, subscription based uh, performance work, uh, individual videos to, um, uh, to make money so that you can commission artists that need money to um, make more work. That seems like such an obvious idea, but it wouldn't have happened if uh, it hadn't been for the pandemic. So, um, so in some ways, I think, of course, many other things are going to spring forth that um, uh, should have been obvious to us, but that uh, aren't and, and now are becoming obvious. And, and so, I, I, you know, Lear de Bessonet uh, talks about the... the um, uh, <laughs> Haley Flanagan. <laughs> yes, Flanagan's uh, whole, what was the WPA, the WPA. Um, and and she's been trying to revitalize that, you know, for a number of years now. And um, you, you see how, oh, this could actually help make this happen. The, the fact that the pandemic is happening, we could actually get a, a real support, even despite Trump, you know, uh, we could actually, we could put people to work again to make theater uh, in a serious way. And um, there's an opportunity here. So I, 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 I I, I I hear what you're saying that um, this could create opportunity in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Just I think we also should perhaps talk on the on the political. You know, U.S. artists and artistic producers. Maybe also for our global listeners. You know, what is your evaluation of the political situation? What we are in now, and um, also that kind of uh, tsunami we are in without even Corona. Um, what 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 do you feel? How will that turn out? What will what will happen here in America? And how do you feel as artists in that society we live in? <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying not to know so much stuff. I'm trying to just like pay. It Oh, Taylor, we've lost you. Oh, yeah, now I'm you're back. back. Now you're back. I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I was just saying, I don't know. I'm I'm trying to just wonder more. I'm I'm getting. Mm -hmm. I'm, we're, we're working on this piece at the Hero Art Center uh, about Socrates, and Socrates always said he's you know wisest person in the world because he's the only one who will who will admit that he doesn't know anything. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's kind of how I'm, I'm feeling right now is I don't know anything right now. I'm just experimenting, but I'm really happy that a bunch of people are game to experiment um, with me and, and that I get to experiment in their projects. And uh, I guess that's that's where I'm at in that in that consideration right now. Uh, how about you, Kristen? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I am uh, a director by craft and I've been a uh, a co-conceiver and co-creator with other people, but I'm not usually the one that I'll, I'll adapt language, but I'm not usually the one generating language, but I've been starting to do that in this time that feels helpful. So I did like a totally crazy thing and I shared something that I wrote um, that's going to yeah. be up on trickle up, you know, and I'm so nervous yeah. all these people are going to see it, but I did it, yeah. you know, so I just think, you know, it's a time to like put ourselves out there and to take risk. And um, I, um, when Trump got elected, I left a lot of my arts boards and I started serving on the community board because I felt like I could have more of an impact in that arena at that time. I wanted to be more involved with grassroots politics. Um, I've continued um, to, to serve on the community board and to get involved with things, um, thinking about uh, volunteering with a city council member to get involved in different ways there. Um, I, I think that the, the national arena is not the place where I feel like I can make a difference or what I think um, can carry um, right now. So I'm looking at how local can I have impact local um, and feel like um, I'm someone who can contribute something to the conversation and I can learn from what's being discussed and learn from the processes that other people are going through. So that's what. Mm. Yeah, just um, uh, from our, uh, we can also submit questions. It's to seagulltalks at gmail.com. And uh, VG uh, March uh, says she wants to see the link uh, of the site Taylor is talking about. I think it should be, if you watch on HowlRound, it should be uh, 
below uh, the screen, again, thanks to HowlRound and Emerson College for, for hosting um, this talk. Um, it's just uh, www.tricklepnyc.com. Tricklepnyc.com. Yeah. yeah, we got an email from Rebecca uh, Frost. Who's oh, I'm sorry, from, um, yeah. .org, .org. We haven't quite set up the .com yet. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's going to be trickle up, dot, trickle up, NYC .org. NYC um, .org. So we have a, a message from Rebecca Frost from Minneapolis, and she thinks University of Minnesota could be also helpful uh, to subscribe, and their students would be interested right. in this. And yeah. Annie Parsons sent a, a question. She watched the 10 videos. Um, the quality of the best idea she, she likes, they largely stem from what is rather than constructing a new uh, reality. And um, she says uh, they uh, take up very little physical space and they are like a brief haiku. <laughs> and so uh, unintentionally or knowing, uh, intentionally you have created a new theatrical form that could be described as short form amateur videos of existing material or very wet paint with little regard for the how of the presentation. <laughs> so um, uh, she thinks, uh, and I want to know if you agree, have you nudged theater forward as a form? <laughs> the question is that- um, I, I don't think, I, I, you know, if you, if you think you've nudged it, you, you aren't the one who's nudged it. <laughs> so <laughs> I, 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 I'm not the one to say that. We'll let the people decide that in 50 years. But, um, but, uh, circumstances are, are I, I do find it fascinating i find the videos really beautiful and fascinating to watch um i i, I think it's maybe because the, the generosity of spirit is about trying to help other people as opposed to promote yourself so much um which is what instagram tends to be more about is that you're promoting a product or yourself mm -hmm. or yourself through a product and these just tend to be people really just sharing their um sharing their art uh, with a lot of humility. And uh, yeah, the amateur um, quality of the filmmaking and some of them aren't, some of, there's a couple that are quite um, beautiful. Lynn Nottages has a combination of both the amateur sitting in front of a, a screen, but also um, editing and and uh, beautiful other film elements involved in it. And Ty Defoe is also has all this beautiful animation that comes in. Um, so, uh, that, that, but that, that, that kind of um, real professional in terms of the, the uh, and when I say professional, I just mean like considered, um, like considered art of some someone like Sarah Rule reading a poem that she's worked really hard on, but the, the, the vulnerability and the humanity of not every element is um, as polished as the poem is, quite beautiful. It's the juxtaposition that I've been going for my entire career is how do you put virtuosity and imperfection on a stage at the same time? Mm -hmm. So I think that's what's quite beautiful about um, the videos as, as I see them. Yeah, no, no, they are great. Um, I think a great way to, uh, to, to make and also to stay, um, to stay in contact. I mean, it's our first uh, Siegel Talks. We should have prepared something that at least we could see one video on the screen, but we will get to it. And maybe we can once in a while play one of the one of the things to remind people of it. And, uh, and oh, sure this is what I'll also say. Can I just say this too, that, the mon that we're not just raising money for artists who are, um, um, this is one of the things that I think could change that would be great is the gatekeeping of, of um, our, of the arts field in, um, mm -hmm. in, in that we're not just raising money for artists who are established or who um, whose gigs all got canceled. That We're doing that too. We're, we're trying to do that for those people as well. But we're also raising money for the person who, um, whose gig, who is an artist, who's an amazing guitar player or whatever, but uh, they didn't have a gig. Their gig was busboying, you know, being a busboy. Mm -hmm. And so like, we want to, we're trying to share the space with everybody and that's um that's that's our hope is that we can um give gigs to somebody like that as well as somebody who's uh, got the 20 years of experience or you know <laughs> who's um and and then there's an, another beautiful thing is uh, our our dear friend clove um 
uh, offered uh, Ruth Malachek videos, um, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. you know, that have never been seen before. Yeah. So hopefully yeah. we'll be able to put up some video of Ruth Malachek. Um, uh, you know, so th I think there's a historical um, room for this and there's also room for it, uh, for it to, for the past to be in dialogue with the present um, as well. And um, it's just, it's quite sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Could be a great archive uh, like Kenneth Goldsmith's ubu.com site, you know, that is a fantastic collection, which he has a conceptual poet, I think it's his greatest poem, which he um, also put together also maybe something to look at, uh, which is open and free. But then this could also be a storage, a memory machine, you know, of a, of a yeah. New York theater. Yeah, and we're building, I mean, it's a week old, so we're, yeah. still, we're still figuring out what it is, mm -hmm. and it's changing every day, and, um, mm -hmm. um, but I'm just so happy that in a week's time, we got somebody $10,000. <laughs> This is sensational. And also the amount of artists uh, you put uh, together in that time that in a way that global crisis uh, that provoked it also has global uh, tools for us to connect, to work yeah. from home, uh, to have things delivered in a way and also to stay connected. So it is in a way all connected. And I think it will it feels really like a giant change. devised art piece. I mean, I don't tend to make devised work, but I, I tend to make mm -hmm. really collaborative work. Yeah, it's uh, one piece it, together. It feels like a giant devised piece because everybody makes their own video and they and mm -hmm. put it up. So it's 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 I don't know, I find it I find it incredibly moving. I, I, I feel yeah. like the content is way more interesting than what you find on Netflix personally for me. So mm. I'm just and happy maybe, it exists too. Yeah. yeah, and maybe people in Japan or Italy or Germany might say this is a great idea that comes out of the New York community that yeah. could be done uh, for, 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 for their own work. Yeah, uh, we hope so. We hope so. Yeah. So that, that would be would be a good thing. So um, are you guys reading something? Are you listening to music? We should listen. Is there something where you say, I just, this was meaningful to me. Is there something what, yeah. so maybe you start with Kristen, what do you have? Post-colonial love poems. Yeah. Tell us a bit. What, Natalie what? Diaz, she's a wonderful poet and it's a really moving piece. So will you maybe read us, will you read us one poem, but it's one you like <laughs> that it was meaningful? Uh, I don't know. Is that okay to do? It's because it's yeah. real. Yeah. That's, that's fine. In a radio also, you can read a poem. And... Um, uh, they're kind of long. I think they might be too long, Frank. Too long? Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking for one that's short enough. No, most of them are like a couple of pages. Well, or a beginning of one you like. You can look, but Taylor, what, are you... Um, what are you? I, do you have time, or are you, do you listen to music? What do you do? How do you well, get your ideas? My idea? husband listens to music while I type. <laughs> yeah. That's all I do. So what What do you listen to? He we he got really into Bronski beat the other day. Okay. And so we, he's had that on a loop, and uh, you know it really holds up. I I always kind of thought, oh, is that cheesy eighties music and stuff? Yeah. The arrangement's quite wonderful, and. Uh, and especially that it ain't necessarily so. And you just think, wow, what, what wonderful ideas they all had and, um, and they're activists. And it was, it's been kind of uplifting, you know, we've been, I, and a lot of queers I think have been feeling a little triggered because uh, I mean, the first two people that I know who died of, of this were uh, gay men who had survived the AIDS epidemic. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, a wonderful queen, uh, Mona Foote, um, uh, who was a, a real leader in the club scene in New York City and um, totally fit, totally uh, no kind of uh, pre-existing condition issues. Uh, and so it was kind of uh, scary, uh, but somebody who was about, I don't know, maybe um, six years older than me or uh, and who had you know been through uh the epidemic the AIDS epidemic um and so to die of this feels like ugh. you know and there's a meme going around gay gay social media which is like oh all those years of safe sex and now i can die of a handshake you know yeah <laughs> like ugh. you know so I, I don't know there's a lot of triggering that's going on um uh in terms of those feelings that people had from that time coming back and memories and things so so it's um it's uh it's just an emotional 
time, I think. And um, I don't really know what to say about it other than that, but uh, acknowledge that that's happening. And and also acknowledge, people sometimes ask me like about 24 decade, which was 24 hours long and you know took up a lot of space and blah, 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 blah. And people would say, well, what made you, I got an interviewer one day say, what made you feel like you could take up that much space? You know, and um, I think she was fishing for the, you know, privilege comment and stuff and, and, and which is pro probably true. Uh, but the other thing was Larry Kramer, you know, <laughs> Larry Kramer is who what made me feel like I could take up that much space. Like, like you don't have to ask for, for permission to participate mm -hmm. in, in the creativity of your own survival. And so uh, that's, that's how I feel about right now is we don't have to ask permission. That's why we did this thing in a week um, was because we didn't want to have to, you know, we didn't want to have to like fill out a form to ask permission to be able to do it and pay the $7,000 fee to be able to do it. We just were like, no, we're just going to gorilla this thing and we're going to we'll put it up and we'll figure out the details after it's up. So now I'm figuring out the details now. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and um, and um, just so maybe at the end, there are uh, personal projects you work on. Is there something we say this is giving me an idea? I don't know. Maybe it might be too early to talk, but is there something um, we are working on at the moment? Which, in case we all get back to our normal lives, which we will be seeing, is there maybe all your current projects? What are you doing? Tell you mentioned it earlier, cursing yeah. your your opera, but just still tell, tell us a little bit. I think that's yeah. good for our listeners to hear what you're working on. What's well, on your I mean, I, I, Christian, I, I'm the resident playwright at the Hero Arts Center, so I'm working on a new piece for uh, here um, called The Hang uh, with composer Matt Ray, uh, who was the musical director and arranger uh, of 24 Decade, uh, and he's a real jazz guy. So he's re uh, we're making a jazz kind of opera. Um, and uh, and it's just about people hanging out together, actually. So it's uh, going to be an interesting project to write during this time. And um, we've been writing about it. I, I keep having the question of how much do you go uh, into the consideration of what's happening right now, or how much do you just stay on track? Um, and uh, I think it's probably the answer is going to be a yes and. Um, but I, 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 I'm. I, we're just kind of like working a little bit every day on it, you know. Now Trickle has been taking up all of my time, but but mm -hmm. he's he's composing uh, to some things I've written. So um, so we're so, so yeah, but that's you know moving forward a little bit at a time. And then there's a couple other projects that I won't go into, but um, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, Kristen, uh, what's what's uh, well, uh, the, the, Zoom opera, mm -hmm. the Zoom opera is the most immediate thing right now, as I said, with Rob and Kamala. Uh, but Kamala and I have a longer term project that we're, we, we're just in the beginning stages of called Joan of the City, which is a kind of Joan of Arc. And uh, it's meant to be outside uh, with mixed reality glasses. And there are like seven <laughs> different Jones and you follow your own Joan in the street, like a group of like 15 or 20 audience members follows each Joan, the Joan that they've chosen to follow. And every now and again, the Jones cross each other's path and the audience members can change flow. But the Jones are all uh, perceived as mentally ill and as a result are homeless. And so the piece is trying to address this issue of the people that we don't see and the perception, uh, the lack of understanding and compassion that we have for people around us uh, and eventually all of the Jones arrive in a place and lead their audience members there. And then we're all in the same space and there's no mixed reality glasses anymore. They're not seeing their, her visions anymore in, in, through their glasses. Now they're seeing them, everybody has a shared vision in the same space. Um, so we're just starting that piece um, and doing a lot of thinking about it. Um, and, and we're just and at the beginning. Will you, are you considering you know, the, the social distancing aspects right now, or are you just like, we'll just wait and see? Uh, how, how's that in the uh, process? Yeah, I mean, we haven't revisited the concept of walking in the streets since uh, since this started. So yeah, that's gonna be a whole different thing. Yeah, mm. definitely. Well, that, that, that will, be, will be interesting. I mean, we're coming close uh, to the first, uh, at the end of our first Siegel talk and, uh, and really uh, thank you guys um, for, um, for, for sharing your time. I know how busy you are, how much you do, and we all admire you. If we 
Kristen for running the Great Here Arts Center and, and for Taylor Mac next. You know, the great things you do coming out of New York. I know what you did in Berlin, this great, great success you brought to a very big city that has that long um, oh, tradition so of cabaret singing was so a great thing. Yeah, was Thomas great. Uber Andra got you in there and, um, yes, and that you brought something from New York to the world. So really fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And it wouldn't have happened if the places wouldn't have been open like the Hears and many, many, many others. And that was my hope that, you know, everybody will watch a little bit more careful about the artists who do work and who think it's essential practice actually to do art in the uh, time we live on. So thank you so much again. Thank you to HowlRound, uh, Vijay and Thea for, for helping us, my team, which is uh, Sun Young and uh, May and uh, great Jackie. So, um, so I hope it will, will go on as in the off to a good start. And thank you for participating for our audience to send us some questions or emails or recommendations. And please do go to uh, trickleupnyc.com. Support this. I think it's dot org. Dot org. Dot org. Trickleupnyc.org. We're working on it. So we bought the com, but yeah, it, we just haven't like. We haven't figured it out yet. We haven't figured it out yet. And Five million reasons why it's complicated. Yeah. <laughs> and people can submit to you guys, right? And they can uh, uh, maybe well, in the future stage. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to see. We're too, too small of a little organization. You know, it's all volunteer and there's like, yeah. <laughs> there's like five see. of us, you know. So uh, well, we, we're, we're not quite doing the thing where anyone can submit at any time. But, yeah. we're, we're, uh, but maybe we'll get to that place. Yeah. Good. And if any big donor of any big foundation uh, listening to this, uh, if you want to invest uh, smartly, wisely, something that really will benefit a lot of artists, but also a community, this is the thing to do. So uh, thank you all and uh, goodbye. And I'm going to click now on the little red words that leave meeting and uh, on my <laughs> second uh, Zoom talk ever. And uh, thank you again and thank good you. luck. Stay in touch. Bye -bye. Thank you.